So let's look at the following example that deals with projectile motion. So a ball rolls off a cliff with some unknown horizontal velocity. So here's our ball rolling off the cliff with our unknown velocity along the x-axis. Now if the cliff is 50 meters tall, so its height of the cliff is 50 meters, and the ball travels a horizontal displacement of 90 meters, so from the point of the cliff to the point where the ball hits the ground is 90 meters, what is the ball's initial horizontal velocity? So in other words, our ball is rolling on the cliff on a straight path along the cliff and the ball rolls off the cliff with an unknown, with an unknown initial velocity along the x-axis. And that initial velocity propels it 90 meters from the cliff to the point where the ball hits the ground. So we know our x displacement, we know our y displacement, and we know a few other things. How would we find our v initial, our initial velocity along the x direction? So first let's look at what else we know. So once again we know our displacement is 50 so let's say our initial y is 50 meters so it's 50 meters high the cliff that is and our final y is 0 meters so the ground represents 0 meters tall. Now we know our initial x is simply 0 this point is 0 and we know our final x is 90 meters away from the ground uh, away from the cliff that's where the ball hits the ground. We also know that our acceleration along the x direction is zero and our acceleration along the y direction is negative 9.81 meters per second second. And we know that the ball was rolling on the cliff on a straight path. And that means its initial vertical velocity is zero. So Vy initial is zero meters per second. So knowing all this, how will we find our answer. So we first must find the time that our ball spends in the air and then we can take our displacement in the x direction, divide that by the time and we'll find our initial horizontal velocity. So let's, firm, let's first find the time that our ball spends in the air. So let's use this formula because in this formula we know all the variables but one. We don't know time. And that's exactly what we're looking for in the first step. So, we plug in 0 for this guy, we plug in 50 for this guy, we plug in 0 for this guy because our velocity is 0, so this guy cancels and this guy cancels. Now our acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second second and the time is what we're looking for, so we leave the time as t squared. So, we take the 50, we bring it to this side, we get negative 50 meters equals negative 1 half, times our acceleration. The negatives cancel, we multiply by 2 and we divide by 9.81 and we find that t squared is equal to some number. So we take the square root of both sides and we choose the positive answer because remember we can't have negative time. Time is a scalar and so it doesn't have any direction. It only has a magnitude and a positive magnitude. So we choose the time is, is a positive 3.19 seconds. So our ball spends 3.19 seconds in the air. And now we use this formula to find our velocity or initial velocity in the x direction. So we plug in our uh, 90 meters for the x, our zero for this, and since the acceleration along the x direction is zero, this cancels out. So we get 90 equals 3.19, and what times what we're trying to find. We divide both sides by 3.19 seconds and we get exactly what we said we were going to get. Our displacement in the x direction divided by the time that our ball spends in the air. And we get our initial velocity along the x direction to be 28.21 meters per second. So our ball leaves the cliff with this velocity and this velocity propels it 90 meters from the cliff. So the ball hits the ground 90 meters away from the cliff.